Ibra, this is your week ahead astrology forecast from Astrology Motivation by Born Without Boundaries. In these weekly videos, I review the major planetary aspects and transits and how they impact your natal sun and what that means for your bottom line. I'm going to start out really broad with the big stuff, the stuff that everybody is generally going to be impacted by. And then I'm going to focus that down into Libra specific information and that all of you guys should be aware of. And then I will break things down into the decans, which is groups of 10 degrees. There's three total in every single zodiac sign. And it helps astrologers understand the angles that are being created between your natal sun and um, other planets and not all not all your natal suns are going to be impacted the same way because they all fall in different areas of the zodiac sign of Libra now for this video all you need to know is when your birth date is because I'll be able to translate the decans into estimated birth date ranges so you'll know where your birth date falls into if you want exact then please go get your natal chart after this video. Um, it's easy, you need your birth date, which you already have, your birth time and your birth location. You put all that information in and you just, uh, well, you search free natal chart or free birth chart. <clears throat> There's so many websites. You just go and put it, your information in a couple of seconds, um, it'll turn out a natal chart for you guys. So that's really easy to get. But for this video, all you need to know is when your birth date is. Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry about that. So <clears throat> this is a week from July 11th through the 17th of 2023. 20, uh, um, we're going to start out really broad. There is actually a lot of big stuff happening this week. The biggest thing is that at the end of the week on the 17th, there's a new moon. It's a new moon in Cancer, but it is opposite to Pluto. So it's there's pretty, it's at 26 degrees Cancer. Um, it's opposite Pluto. <clears throat> excuse me trying to neptune <clears throat> i apologize trying to neptune and sextile to uranus um it's a lot it's it's uh, also square to chiron um that's a lot of energy for a new moon that's a lot of release that's a lot that has to get out of the way for that new start to begin and this new start can be based in some ways on um, opportunities to just release our uniqueness and to declare our individuality. Uranus could also mean some technological breakthroughs or discoveries that none of us can predict yet. The trine to Neptune means there's a huge, tremendous undertone of intuition and psychic energy engaging in this new moon. So it's very powerful for manifestation. It can also be in some ways very powerful for the way we've deceived ourselves or how we've tried too hard to be different or unique without really expressing our uniqueness at all. So this could be just big, big, big changes and it is definitely one to watch. Um, all week long, we also have another challenging energy, which is the sun opposite Pluto. Of course, the sun is what makes a new moon new. It's when the moon conjuncts the sun. But all week long, it does, so the new moon only lasts for one, one day. And the energies are around, say, between the 16th, 17th, and the 18th of July. Uh, the new moon is happening on the 17th. But all week long, <laughs> already, the sun is in opposition to Pluto that is formidable energy to say the least there is this sense of the hidden versus what's brought to light the ego and the deconstruction to reconstruct it the understanding of just who the hell we are as a species um as well as needing to talk about difficult things that need to come up this also engages us in what else is is a real big thing that's happening this week a big transit which is the nodes are changing every say year and a half the nodes change zodiac signs and they change like 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 a full horizon line they change together so the south node is going into libra and the north node is going into aries and so where we may have been having a lot of conversation uh this past year and a half about the traditional which is taurus energy versus the um the hidden or the disgraced or what used to be shameful which is where the south note is which is where people were sitting and seeping in and feeling really comfortable with whereas they were always challenging traditional norms which was taurus which is where the north note is 
now that whole those whole idea ideological conversations are going to be changing because the south node is about to enter into libra and the north node is about to enter into aries aries rules the individual the sense of self libra rules partnership and understanding the self through connection to somebody else we have for many many years now 18 years it's been since we had um i think the same configuration with the south nodes with the nodes so there's a sense of um for a while now we've been getting really real com really really comfortable with our sense of individuality and individual uniqueness but as this transit happens now the south node where our comfort zone is is now in partnership and it's going, we're going to, our individuality is going to be challenged not necessarily our uniqueness but just our emphasis and focus on our soloness our self versus the partnerships and this could really change the way that we connect with each other um better or worse that's not what i'm trying to say what i'm trying to say it's a different it's a different take on where our focus and where the major arguments are going to be happening right now um south node is usually um where you take a lot of um south node usually is is is, is where it's more relaxed where people are happier with you so libra threes are going to get a really um easy couple of months because south node is like they're pe people are just going to be naturally comfortable with them but north nodes sitting on that the those um um aries ones is going to be really challenging like like people just being irritated by you or feeling uncomfortable by you for no freaking reason at all there is that sense of the north node everybody wants to challenge it because it's bringing up things that you don't want to talk about or you don't want to listen to this is a huge dynamic shift and it's happening on the day of the new moon when the new moon is square to the nodes and opposite pluto so these are huge dynamic changes where we won't change back from because anything that involves pluto means that we're taking things to the extreme and it's not coming back this is a dynamic change that's happening to all of us I mean, nodes change every 18 months, but not all of them are square to Pluto when Pluto is opposite a new moon while this is happening. So this is tremendous change and shift in our consciousness and our awareness and what we think is right or wrong or what we're willing to address and be challenged by. So, um, yeah, I, I'm really interested to see how this actually turns out. The new moon itself on the 17th is in Cancer. It is opposite Pluto, trine, uh, Neptune, and uh, uh, sextile to Uranus, and square to Chiron, which means there is this energy of, um, not really square to Chiron, is it? No, because Chiron is at 19 degrees Aries. So we'll leave that, we'll leave that for a second because um, really the sun is square to Chiron up until this new moon um leading up to this new moon challenges with dealing with trauma challenges with facing the the pain and suffering and, and knowing what to do with it challenges with our egos and challenges to our egos and feeling good enough is moving up to then this new moon so the new moon is actually not square to chiron but it is sextile to uranus which is a comfort with ingenuity and difference and change um, as well as Nept trying to Neptune which is intuitive energy and very fluent energy and very healing energy and spiritual energy so this could be our time of reckoning when something comes out that just has to in order for us to move forward um, we have all week long Venus still conjunct to Mars though Mars is in Virgo now and Mars is in opposition to Saturn which makes it very contentious and very angry because it feels really restricted I think Mars is having a hard time finding a standard routine to put everything into when Saturn is opposing it in Pisces and Saturn is trying to do something brand new which is construct something out of nothing and turn dreams into reality and ultimately there's no groundwork that's been laid yet which can be very frustrating for mars and virgo so there's dissonance there and feel, being felt feel like you you're being held back 
There's also that Saturnian um, semi-square to Chiron, which is a challenge to feeling even good enough, or should I even try anything new because I'm not good enough at it or I'm not good at it. You know, so a lot of self-doubt and anxiety is in the air, and it's in the air right through the 30th of this month. Um, we also have um, Venus square to Chiron all week long, um, which is challenging the norm, challenging our desire and what we find attractive. And there could be dissonance just there with a sense of, but I'm, I don't want to do the same thing. I don't want to have the same thing. And that could cause a lot of um, discord when it comes to our relationships or our sexual desires. Uh, I think all of this is coming to a head this week with this new moon and the switch of the nodes and it could be a huge kind of explosion that happens because of it. Um, what else did I write down here? We have the north node uh, trying to Venus-Mars conjunction, which means that, yeah, the Venus-Mars conjunction is trying to push us forward and to, to harmonize us with our future as opposed to just keep taking opportunities from what we're comfortable with. So this is, um, like it or not, here it comes, is all I really have to say. So what does that mean for you guys, for Libras? Well, let's look at what's going on in Libra. So in the zodiac sign of Libra, by the 17th, the south node is going to, it's going to fall in. It's at zero degrees Scorpio right now, and it's hitting 29 degrees Libra because it comes, south node comes in backwards. So essentially, it goes from the beginning of Scorpio into the end of Libra, and it happens backwards. So um, Libra 3 is 29 degrees Libra. You guys are going to get hit with the South Node, and it's going to be there for quite some time. It's going to be there for at least six, seven months, something like that. And the South Node is not actually challenging energy. It's, it's energy that's challenging because it makes things so easy for you. It's like you're saying what everybody wants to hear. So there could be some easement that comes to your character or encouragement that comes to your sense of self once that south node hits. Um, of course, that also means you're in opposition to the north node. But um, what does that mean? I think the south node conjuncting your natal sun is going to affect you much more profoundly. And in some ways, for a while, you won't even have to think about the challenges or the discomfort zones. This is actually an easement that you should enjoy. But that's the only thing that's happening in Libra. So let's go into your Venus. Venus is your ruling dignitary. So wherever she is and whatever is happening to her is in, to some degree happening to you. It's at least gonna flavor your entire week. So we have Venus this whole week conjunct to Mars, which is a very sexual energy, but since she's also square to Uranus, this is sexual frustration or sexual desire that's outside of what you normally would want or expect. So this could really rattle the cages, especially if you're in a long-term relationship. This could make you kind of very experimental sexually as well, in which case do it. As long as your spouse or significant other is cool with it, it could also tempt you to go outside your relationship, which cause, could cause great deal of tension. Um, but it would be very telling, and I think that that will only happen to weaker relationships. Venus all week long is sextile to the south node, which is appropriate, especially for Libra 3s, this sense of sensuality and your good looks and your aesthetic beauty or people finding you this way, opening opportunities and doors for you, and people will be especially comfortable with you this week. So there could be major breakthroughs in your desirability this week. Um, and then we have trying to the, to the north node, like I said, trying to harmonize toward the future and feeling comfortable about the future because we're really comfortable with where we're coming from. And then we have a quincunx to Neptune, which means there could be higher amounts of delusion that come in or that challenge your norm or that frustrate you or you're finding that your sense of especially self-deception is very much uh, challenged this week. Um, let's go into the decades. So if you know that your natal sun is between zero and nine degrees Libra, 
it is in the first decade of Libra and you guys are Libra ones. This correlates to birthdays that are September Libra. So basically the September 22nd through the 30th, maybe up through the 1st of October, you guys are Libra ones. Your natal suns are going to be sextile Mercury in the beginning of the week and then by the end of the week, semi-square to Mercury. So that's a real challenge. What I would suggest is you get any important paperwork or discussions or applications or whatever done in the beginning of the week because once the semi-square happens, you're gonna have miscommunications and sort of stubbornnesses and it's going to be like you don't even wanna pay attention to what you have to pay attention to. So definitely get it done in the beginning of the week. Very important for you guys. But that's pretty much what you guys have to focus on this week. Libra twos, if your natal sun is between 10 and 19 degrees Libra, you are Libra twos. Um, that correlates to say October 2nd through October 11th birthdays, that, that kind of time span. Or for some of you, it's October 1st through uh, the 10th. It's the first say 10 days of October. Um, your natal suns are semi-square to Mars, which means they're also semi-square to Venus if you're at the cusp um, that would mean basically you're born around the 1st or 2nd of October. Um, the cusp of the second decan, by the way. That's what I mean, not the cusp of Libra. Um, your natal suns are semi-square to this Venus-Mars conjunction. This means that there could be some tension, frustration, agitation, a special agitation with stubbornness that's in your relationship. Dealing with your own stubbornness or what you the stuff that you haven't wanted to confront. Um, this could pose kind of challenges and resistance, just stubbornness, just, just agitating you in your relationships um, this week. Um, we also have uh, you guys in opposition to Chiron, which means there has been a long-term sense of self-doubt. This is gonna be especially prevalent for those of you born around the 9th or 10th, maybe the 11th, um, because that is gonna be those of you whose natal suns are really in a tight opposition to Chiron, which means always questioning your self-worth because of what you've been through. Um, challenges with self-esteem or even since Chiron is in Aries, this sense of aches and pains that have come from old injuries getting in your way. So especially for those of you born around the 9th, 10th, 11th, it's going to be agitating you a lot. Those of you born toward the beginning of the second decade, you'll start to feel a little bit of relief because you've gotten it over the past couple of years as Chiron starts to change from the first, the second decade into the third but it's still at 19 degrees Chiron. So that puts it right across the board for those of you born around the 9th or 10th. Um, you're also quincunx to Jupiter, your natal suns, which means I want, it, I want things to happen now. I want things to happen quickly. And when they don't, you once again, take it personally. So I think the objective for you guys is to not take it personally. I know that the world is moving a lot slower than you think it is, even for everybody else. And that these physical aches and pains are stuff that you have to address in order to heal yourself. So slowing things down is highly recommended and actually going to be good for you. This is not really the time in your life when you should be pushing that hard. And it's going to really frustrate you and agitate you and maybe even bore you in some ways when it comes to your sexual relationships. Or it could be it could be working out in your finances. So you could find a lot of stubbornness when it comes to why am I not moving forward? Why am I not seeing any push forward when it comes to my financial situations? You can't fight it, you can't resist it. You just have to sort of like wait it out. And by the end of this year, it sh you should find some sort of relief here. Um, Cause these are all long-term. <clears throat> Libra threes. If your natal suns are somewhere between 20 and 29 degrees Libra, you are Libra threes. This correlates to Libras born between say the 11th and the 21st of October. Um, your natal suns are the ones that are conjunct the South Node, especially if you're on the Scorpio cusp. And this is gonna hit you real hard, but it could really help. This sense of easement, the sense of just without you trying, people feeling comfortable around you, which could actually help you a great deal when it comes to progress, right? You won't even have to try to speak your mind. People will kind of just be on your side. This is really kind of a blessing that happens. And as long as you don't feel like it's an entitlement or this is the way things are gonna stay, you can just enjoy it and use it to your advantage while it's there. 
Um, we have a sextile to Mars as well, which means that there's a lot of energy and there's a lot of um, opportunity for taking action or being forthright this week. So definitely do it. Um, your natal suns are square to the current sun all week long, which means they're also square to this new moon. There's dynamic changes that are going to happen to you around this new moon. And it's going to challenge the crap out of you, especially emotionally. But Libra, these are major breakthroughs that needed to happen for you. Um, you have a long-term quincunx to Uranus, square to Pluto, and quincunx to Neptune. So quincunx to Uranus is surprise curveballs, out, like out of the blue, getting agitated and frustrated because you don't feel like you could express your uniqueness or your individuality or feeling like you have to assert it more. Um, uh, quincunx to Neptune, which is sort of delusion or, or daydreaming, getting in your way of actually being able to be being just more distractible is basically what it, what it comes down to. It doesn't have to be a totally horrible thing because it can be very creative if you use this energy to channel this energy into creativity, but it is um, more easily distracted. And, but that's been that way for a while now. Um, and it will continue to be that way as Neptune sort of hangs out in the third decan of Pisces. Um, and then that long-term square to Pluto, I mean, it's, it's so being exacerbated by the sun and the new moon this week that these are dynamic changes that are happening to you or your character. And this sense of the sun square Pluto, people almost feel you like they, you're relentless. You, you will not not get your way, but people could resist you just because they feel like you're bullying them for right now. And ultimately, I just think that this is going to be a very powerful moment for you where if you really, really want something, go for it and don't take no for an answer, but only on the things that are most important and still aligned with your morality. Because if you don't use it just toward those things, it can make you really greedy and selfish and form a lot of bad energy around you. Just an FYI. So it's almost like in some ways you're being set up to get what you want, to be pushed into a corner in order to punch back, but only punch when it's really important this week. This is a really strong new moon for you to manifest around. And so do it. Do it where only where it's most important. And it comes from a good spot, not a space of pain or suffering or anger. Just an FYI. I love you guys so much and I appreciate you watching this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to Astrology Motivation. Help us grow over here. We're over 10,000 strong now and I'm so happy for the channel's growth and I'm so proud of it, so thank you. Now, um, don't forget to come over to Born Without Boundaries Tarot to watch your week ahead astrology forecast. Very, I'm, I'm sorry, to watch your week ahead tarot card reading. Can't wait to see you guys over there. And feel free to leave your comments below because you know I want to know how this energy is impacting you. This is a very powerful week for you, all of you Libras. Just an FYI, with that visit from the South Node, it's a huge thud and a dynamic shift, like a clock just, boom, tipped an arrow into your home. So let's see how it works out. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the video. Bye.